A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does your grave look like? Here's an example of a grave that I've seen. It was at the home of a recluse. And I don't mean a hermit who spends his or her life in prayer and wholesome lifestyle. I mean someone who was, for whatever reason, genuinely afraid to leave the house. This person had blocked out the windows. It was musty. There were newspapers animal kennels, and pizza boxes stacked. And there were pathways from the bathroom to the kitchen to the living room to the bedroom. It was foul, and it was musty, and it was not at all inviting. That's an extreme example of a grave that someone can build for him or herself. But I bet that we all have our own graves. And I would dare say that ours are probably more welcoming and look a whole lot nicer. So I ask you again, what does your grave look like? Our graves are made up of the sins in which we live. Perhaps it's too much alcohol, too much food, Maybe it's too many creature comforts that, if we were honest with ourselves, we really don't need. Maybe we have to have the larger grave than any other person, because that's what our consumer society says we have to have. On the contrary, maybe your grave is more barren than anyone else's, as barren as the soul that has lost its relationship with God. Either end, it's not a very good picture. And so I ask you for a final time, what does your grave look like? Ezekiel is prophesying to the Israelites in Babylon. They believe that their own sins have caused God to reproach them, to send them into captivity. Babylon, a foreign land, is their grave. They can't worship God. They can't see the temple. They can't be in his presence. In our own context, that's what our sins do. We can no longer see the temple of God within ourselves because we are trapped. We distort our own relationship with God through our actions. It's not something that God has imposed on us. It's something that we have built up around ourselves. And as much as Ezekiel is foreshadowing the resurrection and the end times, he's also talking about the hope that comes in the Lord coming to us and bringing us out of the trap of our sin. It's like cracking open a musty house or that grave. That Spirit of God is like fresh air coming in and drawing us out. I hope as springtime has come along, we have opened our windows and felt that fresh breeze. That should generate some idea of what it's like to feel that breath of the Lord. I find it really interesting that 
In contrast to uh, Advent, another somewhat penitential season, where you start off somber and build your way in anticipation for the coming of the Lord, in Lent, things get progressively drier. As we enter this last couple of weeks, we start to see coverings over crucifixes. Statues and icons disappear. And I think that's a way of us as a community saying, look how barren our world is in the absence of God. Look how the presence of God will shape our lives. And so as we enter these next couple of weeks, as we prepare to enter Holy Week and the Triduum, let's examine our graves. Let's see what is holding us back. Let's see what, in this last time of penance, we can say to our Lord, please, break this open. Call me out. Bring me to you. Because ultimately, that's what the resurrection is about. It's about being brought out of these traps and entering the fullness of life in God.